chair. No, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yeah, for those in Melbourne, you know where I've been. <laughs> Outside. Hey, it's um, it's a little bit windy, and I'm not even I'm not even going to attempt uh, the hair. You got makeup, but that's it. Because I keep going out and saving my vegetables in the veggie garden. Heavens, it's windy. Good afternoon, Jenny and Flynn. How are you today? I saw you're here. Uh, lovely to see you too, sweetie. That's a shocking job on the hair, isn't it? Hang on. Um, good afternoon. Kathy, Helen Page is here. Fiona, you're here. Are you awake? Why are you awake? Uh, hello, Jane. Hello, Carol. Uh... Carol, I think you've got emails from Steve. If you haven't, can you please let us know? Hello, my other Carol. Hello, Carol Riedel. How are you? Is it Riedel? Riedel. Good afternoon, Kathy Douglas. Uh, we are sending much love and wind and rain your way. <laughs> it's just, it's nearly all gone now. Hello, Maggie. Good afternoon to you. I know, Pat. What? Oh, that is just horrendous, isn't it? What a night. Uh, the night, not so much this morning. So we've got, um, I don't know about everyone else, but we've got bookings in with the guy coming to fix the front fence because it's made of aluminium. And we've got another guy coming to do a quote on the back fence because they're both falling over in the wind and that one's wood. So it's been one of those mornings. Um, hello, Yvonne. How are you today? She says, good afternoon, Lisa and everyone. A lovely little uh, Chandler's Cottage community. Joan, hope all okay with the wide weather. Yeah, everything's fine except for the hair. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Rob left this morning and rang me straight away. I thought, what's he forgotten? His lunch, obviously he hasn't forgotten his phone, something. And he said, walk out the front door and have a look up the street. And it's like big trees all down. But he could get round the corner, yet when young Stephen arrived, he'd been out in the wind and the rain, the, the wind was so strong, the tree had fallen over and then it had pushed it down the street and he couldn't get through. And we live in downtown suburbia at the moment. Lynette, and you get the bonus points today. Thank you very much. I shall explain this old favourite of mine behind me in a minute and why, two reasons why it's hanging today. Mel, hello, lovely. How are you? Yes, yeah, so you got my email. You're all good with your pink fabric. Great. It's hot and windy in Sydney. Oh, well, there you go. Hello, Joe. Uh, Bernadette. Oh, look, absolutely my pleasure to send on the fabric. So, after we sent all the coin purse frames out, I got in trouble with Steve because I forgot to remind him that you were all getting freebie pink fabric and they had all gone. So straight away, the day after, we popped all the pink bits in the mail for you, but some of you got your parcels way quicker than I thought you would. Interesting, but Australia Post have changed the way that they're distributing within Victoria, which they tell us is going to be better, and at the moment I actually, I actually think it is. Um, not quite blown away. But my garden's suffering. I only have a little garden, but it's my pride and joy of vegetables uh, for, for summer. So I was out the wind and the rain tying up Dad's tomatoes this morning. Hello, Denise. Good afternoon, Barbara. Good afternoon, Margarita. Jackie Ferguson's in the building. Yay. And who else is here? Oh, hang on. How do I say that? I can't do it. Calliope? Calliope? I, you need to tell me if I'm right because I can't handle it when I'm not. Margaret, hello to you. Oh, Val's here. Hello, Val. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, not doing night shift feed. Great. 
Great, great, great. Yeah, it is afternoon. Josie Carroll's here as well. Josie, I'm pleased that you are here with us. <gasps> Violet's here. Violet's always get a special mention because that's my grandmother's name. Um, so Suzanne, she's got more trees down around her place. No phone calls in or out, but have internet. Well, that's the other way around for you almost, isn't it, this time, Suze? Oh, Marie Noel's here. Everyone's here. Jeanette, have I got everyone? Kathy, Kathy Strumpel, good afternoon to you. Hello, Vicky. Oh, Joe, you got your parcel this morning. Super duper. See, things, things, hello, Christine. Uh, things are, they're moving a little quicker down here. We did get, uh, we got a letter, or Steve got a letter from OzPost, or he was talking to our favourite uh, Australia Post manager. He's speaking to Greg. They've changed the way they're looking after. It's kept state-based now, so we're not... I think that's right. Steve told me they're not chuffing stuff out to other states. And there's two big new distribution centres being used. Something. I don't care. I don't care what it is. It's working. Because we got this letter that said, your last day for sending parcel posts for delivery guaranteed before Christmas is the... 15th of December and we've all gone I don't think so uh, but maybe maybe we're not going to take the risk are we no no we're not no we're not we're, we are going to make sure that everything that uh, we want to make sure that you've got before Christmas we're going to wrap up about the 28th 29th of November I just want that peace of mind I do not want to get to Christmas and find and know that not all of you have got your summer sewing stuff so Oh, Yvonne, so you're in transit to Sunshine West. Well, you know what? If you, if Australia Post actually knows where your parcel is, that's always been very, very reassuring. Uh, Jill, if this probably, if you need to get hold of Tim, just tell me and I will, I don't know why you can't get him, but probably best to email me or ring me after the show if I'm, we're not going to capture that here in, in messages um, but he is there he is working so I don't know why he didn't get your phone call but um, I would give him a buzz if you're trying his email he's had a lot of trouble with emails so perhaps give him a call and yes we need to get you booked in as quickly as possible so it gets done before Christmas here until I have to take my bow to the vet Rosemary right well we better get started then Parcel 9, the way to you yesterday. You posted me a parcel yesterday, Catherine. I hope that's what that means. I've got Christmas decorations starting to arrive, so it's very, very exciting. Um, it's all going to be wonderful. Hey, I better get organised. Oh, that's right. I said I could buy another Christmas tree. This is how we always test if Robert's watching when he shouldn't be from work. That's the first thing. Um, and actually, speaking of shows, just before we get started... Due to, you can see I'm so nervous the power's going to go off at some stage. It flickered a lot this morning and a lot of people don't have power, so fingers crossed I haven't lost us. But our banana show tomorrow. Now, if you know that things, because we do Facebook Live, because we plan things ahead, we always do this and we need that flexibility. If something changes, if an opportunity comes up, we need to be able to switch them around. So I'm going to do it to you again tomorrow. Because it is the long weekend, a few girls said, I really, really want to watch live. I don't want to miss out on the specials. Are you doing specials? What's happening with the Benina specials? All of that stuff. And um, we've got our Benina specials and they actually come online, for want of a better word, on Monday, on the 1st. That's Monday, right? Yes. I need to get hold of those first and I need to work out what I can add to them from Chandler's Cottage because it's usually a really straightforward thing. But the specials are amazing and quite quite different what the Benina have offered this year. So I need to get my head around those and then work out what I can offer extra from Chandler's Cottage because you know that we love to do that. So I'm actually going to move your show tomorrow or our show tomorrow to our big cup day one on Tuesday so it will be a mega show with the specials on the bananas so that's going to be 475 590 the crystal edition and we're also going to have a chat about 720s and 735 so 720s are now um, they are ongoing in terms of if you own one it's all fine 
all the parts, all the bits and bobs, all the service, all the warranty stays, but Benina has decided to bring out a, a newer version, for want of a better word, with a different number on it. It's a 735. There are a few differences, but for those of us that... Oh, I should not say just patchwork, should I? For those of us that prioritise using our machine for piecing applique and patchwork, as opposed to embroidery, there are not that many substantial differences. There's one big one, but there's not many substantial ones. So I, I want to run through all of that with you, and I need to get it all in my head. So we're actually going to do a combo show on Tuesday on machines. Uh, and we're also going to get stuck in, as I promised, on a few little bag essentials. So it's... Wait, I put it somewhere. So Tuesday, I'm pretty confident now that everyone that ordered one of their felt baskets in the first round has got theirs. And we are out of stock at the moment, but I've got a heap more coming in next week. So we're going to, I can confidently come back to this now and we can start adding some more in. So we are going to do some more embellishment on this on Tuesday and we're going to add a zipped pocket to our, uh, to our basket. That's what we're going to do on Tuesday. So we're going to talk zips. While we talk about banana zip feet, jewel feet, all of that. So a big, big combo thing. Now the other thing we're going to do on Tuesday, we're going to get fluffy. Look at the Melbourne colours. Can you tell? Can you tell while I chose them? Um, we're going to get fluffy and we're going to talk about couching and using these for embellishment on surfaces like our felt baskets or onto a wall. So that's all happening and I'll have some of this available. I'm not going to make you buy the whole skein. I'm going to break it down into five metre lengths, all three together and put it together. It looks gorgeous with those uh, hand dyed wool pre-cuts that we had the other day that are up on the website as well. So they all, it all matches. So that will be ready for Tuesday and we'll do machines. Uh, and look, if I'm brutally honest, we, it's a big, big weekend for us because it's uh, we've only got two spots left for Michelle Hill's Be Mindful Quilt. Uh, three girls, three of my girls from the UK signed up literally overnight. So I woke up this morning and all of a sudden there's only two spots left and we've capped it at that. So we've got to get all of those ready to go out. The patterns are coming. They're being shipped from Michelle. She had a few holdups and a few, few issues with things. So uh, that's absolutely fine. We know that and we can tell you that. But they're leaving Adelaide on Monday cup day here so we've got to have it all ready to hit the mail on Wednesday for the first club mail out. I've still got to ring a lot of you to get your backgrounds organized for that and it's Chandler's Cottage applique block of the month mail out week as well. So come on just give me the weekend and I'll be back Tuesday I promise. We will be back and we'll do a whole heap on Tuesday. Oh yes Diane so you're um so sorry everybody uh, the girls in the UK it's much better for them now because you're back earlier at 9 p.m. yeah which means I'm back to watching Natasha at 7 p.m. dinner time it it was that it's that ugly change over four or five weeks isn't it in between that really really catches us out um I just wanted to show you these as well if I may just pop these up here these were the little purses that we had in that marathon long show with Emma on Tuesday. And I didn't have the covers ready to show you. They were literally coming from the printer. So if you are going to pop some of these in your basket, as the saying goes, a um, little bit of telly selly terminology for you, you're going to pop one of those in your basket. I wanted you to see what they look like because they do make a gorgeous gift, just like that, to give to a quilting friend. They are $14.95. So there's that one there with the gold and that's what the silver one looks like with Summer Palace. Look what Cass has done. Aren't they gorgeous covers? She's done an amazing job and look she's got the little shadow of the dragon down the bottom. Oh they're good. I, and when we develop all this stuff up and I must say every now and then I kind of forget how lucky I am to have an amazing graphic designer that can get inside my head and know exactly what I mean. That's the antique brass one. So a little story on the back. So they do make a nice gift just like that. Uh, Christine this morning was telling me 
that she's actually making these up because you can buy the the little purse furniture on its own as well she's making them up and she's going to keep all of her English paper piecing sets from her applique sampler and the bag that the bag everything the satchel we did Tuesday and things in these and on the back she's just going to applique on one of the shapes that's inside so if this is an octagon all her little octagon pieces are in here she's going to applique one of them on the back and this is what she's going to keep how decadent and absolutely gorgeous idea is that love it so organized I'm so glad you can't see where mine are they're not in that greatest spot who said what where busy busy yes Pat your packing boxes I'm assuming oh Diana that's right I do sincerely apologize you are not one of the girls in the UK you are the one that we brag about you're in Costa Rica and I brag about you too, Natasha. I go, have you got one in Costa Rica? I've got a lady that watches us in Costa Rica. Um, and then she kind of jinxes me with a whole heap of other people. <laughs> uh, Christine, yeah, so Christine were talking this morning and she said she had the television and everything set up so she could watch us while painting the veranda and she's still painting. Uh, yes, Diana, I brag about you to everyone. So I'm so sorry. I, I knew you were up there. But I forgot, we do, we say, oh, we got Costa Rica, Spain, Portugal. But I'm not all alive, of course. A lot of the girls watch at a different time. Um, now, new fabrics that came in. What do I, oh yeah, I just want to show you a couple. Because they, Steve unpacked the box that arrived today and he was like, no. Nah, because there weren't any feature fabrics in there. But they were very, very important fabrics to build up stories with. So, the couple that came in today, here's Summer Pal sorry, here's Under the Australian Sun, Pink Teal. There's its flowering gum. But this under here is another pink. And what I'm hoping that you can see in the photo, I got very, very excited when I saw this. It heads towards a salmon pink. Look at, look at all the fine, fine little metallic gold dots on it. So, my pink, this one, goes with all of the pea flowers, uh, the wax flowers, the waratahs, the kangaroo paws. But this other thing I found pulls up the salmon pink in mine. So it pulls up the calistamine or the bottle brush. Can you see that? So it's a peach, oh, probably a better word, a peachy pink. So it's just another one if you do love the, this particular colourway. Um, this is another one. So if you were doing a quilt and you had to have lots of little coordinates, which we do a lot with quilts like Matilda's Medallion and things where we need two or three reds for all of the flying geese around the border or something. See that? They, they all go because this, I can't work backwards today. It's all in reverse for me. This pulls up these. And it works really well because there's lots of little fine dots on the bottle brush. And then this pink pulls up the Waratahs. So the Steve's popping that up now. It is a Michael Miller. So, it, you know, it's going to be the same guys that do Fairy Frost. So they, they know what they're doing. Uh, very, very nice. So there's that one. Now the other one. Hang on. Okay. This will work. But there's another alternative too. So this thing here, we've had a couple like this before, but this one is better. It's got a heavier weave. It's almost like a, a linen weave. And I had two pairs of glasses and they're gone. Where'd they go? Doesn't matter, I can read it. Um, this is called Essex Yarn by Robert Kaufman. It's dyed yarn, so it is different, and it's metallic, and it's got, I'm just trying to read the quantity in here. It is 50% linen, 40% cotton, and 10% lurex for one of better uh, metallic. So it's, it's woven through. It's not printed on. Oh, I hope you can see that. It is just, it is shiny. Shiny, shiny. Same on both sides, so it's a true woven fabric just beautiful so what are you going to do with it well 
you can do this you can do that all day long remember I've got dark teal coming in the border stripe as well but the other interesting thing is because of the way that it reflects even though it's gold this is the first time I've ever said this you can run it with Melba in Nouveau with the silver you can get away with it I don't know why maybe I don't know why but maybe because it's not all in one line around a design like my fabrics it is it's woven through so when it reflects the light it actually reflects probably like a little bit more like a cream yellow and when it does it picks up the little um, what's in your screen these guys the little flower, um, flannel flowers and things so you can run it you can run it with milk bar which I must say I'm a bit excited about at the moment because I did tell you didn't know what we're doing with I told you didn't I what we're doing with Melba did I? I don't know now I don't know who I've told I think I did I'm sure I did I'll tell you hang on give me goods anyway just... there are <clears throat> there are more in this collection uh, I might I might go back and have a look we've had it in what if we had it in we've had it in something a dark silver but it just it didn't it wasn't it wasn't as gorgeous as this so thank you very much mr robert kaufman love your work i did just want to mention these two because we're getting very very low now do you remember all those value packs that we did on threads these really only got two or three left of the other colorways but these were the value packs so please if you were going to have a look at these over the long weekend i would because there's only a couple of cooper Pedi. a lot of them we have run out of but the beautiful the the plummy purple packs called clematis is still there and we've got sugars and spices which kind of go with what i've got on the set today anyway on the set on the back wall let's not get too carried away lisa so now the quilt on the back wall uh this is I, you know the young man that you now speak to on the phone from Chandler's Cottage, he did not exist. <laughs> well he did, he did, um, but just. So twinkle in my eye, that's what my grandmother used to call it, is that right? A twinkle in my eye. A fantastic friend who really expanded my whole appreciation for colour, I'm sure I've mentioned her before, Jennifer St. Orlock. So when I met Jen, she took me from traditional colours and quilting into a wonderful world of really messing with the colour wheel. And, and I was obviously hanging out with her when I did this. But I've popped this up for, for two reasons. Em and I had a really good chat on Tuesday about getting stuck into the geisha for a quilter's life because I, it's been on the Never Never for, for four or five months now. And we talked about the techniques that we are now going to use, which is sort of just like a constant evolution of quicker and easier ways to do applique. Because remember, applique is a dirty word to M. So getting getting our heads around that. And I said, if we are going to do the geisha for a Quilters Life membership, we are going to do the fan. Because I've always wanted to do this in my Melba, in my Melba fan print for the sections of the fan. I've got it, that's what's lovely now for me. I've got enough of my own fabrics to do this. So we are going to come back and do this with 3D flowers, uh, piecing, bagging out really quick, easy techniques, which will be great for beginners. But also, and yeah, um, I had to drop this because you couldn't see the top, um, curved binding. And we're going to talk quickly about that today as well. So this one has got a part of a Dresden as the fans out on the corners. And I've actually bound it um, on the bias around the top not very well i'm hoping that with what i have learnt in the last 15 years it's going to be a tad better this time around but the colors are insane i know where i mean this fabric was the inspiration which uh, were kona bay fabrics this over the top i sort of went where did i get the where did i get the pink uh, and orange from now jennifer would have had a lot of given me the confidence to use it but i'm pretty sure it was my defunct bridesmaid, because I started my engagement with two and ended up with one. 
my defunct bridesmaid had the most gorgeous Lisa Ho linen dress and it was big wide strips of melon orange and hot pink and I loved that dress and she was going to give it to me for my honeymoon and then we and I never got the dress I'm sure I'm sure that's where those colors have come from because I think of that dress every time I look at them but yeah we're going to we're going to do it we're going to do it and it'll be hopefully lots of good fun but you've got to take yourself outside that comfort zone every now and then so oh who can't hear what we're pat are you all right now are we good uh sounds all fine here and I can hear myself out there so I think Steve's got Steve's got the sound on out there um thank you Nancy I'm glad you like it uh so the other thing to oh, that didn't work did it uh, along the line of uh purples and these threads just wanted to show you that we've got some new ones in I had a look through the boutique collection again in the purples and we didn't have enough so this is called it's not showing up as well as it should it is not that dark uh, let me try it overhead hang on it's probably a little bit better there you go see that this is called new grape it is uh, Hoffman Batiks and the, the code on it is N45 if you want to check it out. So that's just one of those beautiful deep deep great purples. We didn't have one and I like to make sure that we've got stories that go together and um, this one did not have a friend and that is lavender and it didn't have a friend. I think it's colour 70 but lavender needed some love so those two go really well together. So I've popped those up and just because we're talking plums today, I haven't done it for ages have I, I've popped my Summer Palace on special for you today, these three, uh, which I lay them down that way, one, two, three. So you've got the dragons and the plum blossoms. And the fans so I've popped them down to 18 for today uh, I'll get Steve to leave that hey wrong camera holy that's better I'll get Steve to leave them up until um, I don't know I don't know I really don't know I'll have to give him a time uh, midnight Sunday there you go so I'll leave those up until midnight Sunday. If you want to grab some for the stash or you've got a bag that you want to make or you've seen one, one of our free download ones, something like that, you can have a little bit of a play. Oh yeah, I grabbed the Paisley. It's not on special or anything, this one. But I just grabbed this because sometimes you find that, that life repeats itself and I know that this is paler, but it's that same thing again, mixing up pinks and oranges and mustard. I did laugh at myself. I'll pop that one back up there. Um, what else? What else? Oh, I uh, grabbed another one on this side as well because it's just, for me, it's about making sure that my stash, the shop, has, has what you need in your stash if you ever need it. I know that sounds really silly, but that's the way that I like to think when I'm deciding what to stop. So um, you know that we've got beautiful dusky pink in Batik that goes with these, uh, sorry Liberty that goes with these two and that's in that dusky pink pack oh which has been out of stock for a couple of days we're just fixing that up this afternoon for you. Um, dusky pinks were out. There's something else that was out. I don't know. We're working very very hard to keep everything in stock at the moment. There's still a big learning curve, but we're getting there. Um, so these two, there's a few other things, you know, we've got, we've got fusions, we've got ombres, we've got my stuff that all goes with it. But I like to make sure that we've got something sort of in all different styles. So this one we've had, this is Victoria. And in fact, Steve might need this for those dusky pink packs. Uh, and we didn't have a really drop dead gorgeous, dark, dark burgundy that will pick up this color in the Christmas bells so that's it and it is called Sonoma and it is colour 
I can't read that. I think it's a four, two, four, one. But it's called Sonoma. So now, you know, I'm happy because we've got what we need. So if you or me decide in a hurry that we want to make something that goes with all of these pinks, we can go to the Dusky Pink Pack. Um, oh, that's why. We can go to the Dusky Pink Pack, uh, Applique Essential Pack, or we know that there are enough coordinates um, laying around at Chandler's Cottage to fill the gap. And this burgundy one will also go with all of these liberties. So, and I, I must apologise, I have not done a pre-cut pack of these. These are available in 25 centimetre cuts. I thought about that the other day. I need to get a couple more in so that we can do up a really nice pack like we've done with the blue ones. So uh, Miss Kate and I will get that organised next week when we might or may not go out for coffee. Big thing, Melbourne people and coffee and being able to go out and have it. It's big from six o'clock tonight. It's on. Oh, that's the, sorry, I didn't show you. The applique purple essential pack as well, just to confirm this pack here <clears throat> that's got 10 purples doesn't have those two new ones I showed you in it. So it is a, it is a different, it is a different pack. So if you're worried about doubling up, you will not double up with those. I think we're good. I think we're good. It's weird doing it on my own again today. I know you're right here, and I'm, I'm very grateful you're right here. But having M here the other day was different. It was all very different again. So, coffee, coffee. Now, what I wanted to do today... Oh, no. Hey, Steve. I've lost my phone... Oh, no, I haven't. I always lose my phone in the house. I actually nearly lost it on set. That's very funny. Uh, what, 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 what? It is lovely. Suzanne, to answer your question, she do you reopen physically? No, not at the moment. So, hello, Francis. Good afternoon. Um, no, Suzanne, we're not at the moment. So, we... We sort of haven't, it's a really weird thing to say, we, we are open all the time, but we have decided not to physically reopen the shop for the time being. There are many, many things that I need to catch up on in, in what we had planned for the last two years, and um, I can't do both at the same time. So, but I can if we are just online. So to give an example, I need to get out and visit a lot of my Benina customers that have bought machines, and I want to go to their place to do that and uh, I want to be able to get a lot of fabric design work done a lot for the next two years we've got lots of opportunities I can't do that and have a shop open at the same time and um, without talking dollars and cents it, it's it's really hard to justify having a big shop open probably I love all of my local customers but if I weigh that up against where most of my customers are it, it, it's sort of it's a big decision and it's still you know the COVID thing we want to see what happens for the next couple of months so we have decided that we are going to uh, stay online for now now having said that may I please say this we will be out and about we have a couple of lovely events and days out planned already with some ladies at their local hall or in their lifestyle village community center or um, I think I'm doing more well craft alive in February. I may have got talked into it, may have been a bit of peer pressure, just a little bit from Karen from Somerset and Margaret Upston from Margaret's Fabrics. Huey, Jerry and Louie will be at more well craft alive. So there's a few little things. We've got big things planned as well. So we sort of, we just want to go, you know, slow. I don't want to stop what I'm doing at the moment to go back and run a shop five days, six days a week. I like spending time with you. I can't do both at the same time. So I don't see a question in a very long way. Yes, I need to have the conversation with Mr. Benina and I'm not looking forward to it. But hopefully he will be okay with it. Hopefully. We'll wait and see. If, if it all goes fine and we, we need to shift again, yes, yes, we will open up a shop again next year. And if not, we will open up eventually wherever we end up. 
But of course, you remember, we're renting. We could end up anywhere. Anywhere. Well, not anywhere. But we could end up somewhere quite different. Who knows? Do you like those? I love these. These are my favourite little set. Have been for ages of boutiques. And uh, as we talked about the other day, we decided for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is sadly about to end, um, that I would package them all up do them at a really lovely price for you and you'll still find a lot of them on the website. Thank you very, very much everyone that has purchased them. I must say that. But I've done up this pack for today. There's only seven of them. Oh, Fiona, will you? Oh, awesome. Okay, then we're definitely doing it. If you're going to be there, Fee, we'll go. We'll go. I just made up seven of these little packs because what I'm going to show you, you can do with anything from your stash if you want to but they are there in there fifteen dollars for six fat eights which is 75 centimeters so they're just all beautiful bush greens they're kind of nice they are lovely to play with I love this one do you remember or you may not I used them on one of our craft and cook shows last year. See, I need to craft and cook. We need to go everywhere and do things and get into people's studios and bring you exciting little insights. It's sort of like, what's the ABC show? Back, back roads, but for quilters. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Better get the car serviced then too. Goodness. Right. So I've got those six here and what I'm going to do is chop them, just chop them. Fiona, I did know that. I'm sure I knew that, that you were down there. I feel like I do. Emma's, uh, Emma's from, Emma's family are all in sale used to holiday at sea spray so it's all it's all kind of happening down there uh, I love Yarram because you, I think you if you're down that way Yarram Drapery has a lot of my fabrics in stock too we're going to take some just some unique little special things to Morwell but sorry I should say you're all coming to Morwell Craft Alive because the condition I said I would go I said I'm going to do a live breakfast show every morning from the Morwell Craft Alive show so we will be there. We'll all be there every morning. So you get to have a look around at the same time. Okay, let me do this. So I've lined them all up. They're all stacked on top of each other. I've got a really nice sharp blade. You're wondering where I'm going with this, aren't you? Can you see I've just, I've just made it a little bit askew it's a little bit off. I'm going to trim that bit off. This here is for tying up the tomatoes or the snow peas or the runner beans. Don't waste that. Fabric ties are fantastic. Okay now this time round I'm going to go back the other way. I always when I piece my pieces, don't worry you'll see what I'm doing in a minute, <laughs> when I piece my pieces I always want to be able to see a little bit so I'm going to make sure that I cut at least an inch wide when I dovetail at that end and I can come down as wide as I like down here so I'm going to come down about what have I got three inches there's no rules I'm going to go that way a good bakery at Yarram as well Fiona I'm sure you would contest with that the pizza pies are fantastic oh, don't say that I'm hungry okay so I'm gonna go back the other way can you see that so you've got you can see the gap and I'm cutting wedges well Kathy yes where were you where have you been we've all been talking about <laughs> we've all been talking about you uh, you'll come to Morwell. All right, okay, we're definitely going to Morwell. Uh, Margaret Upston will be there with her drop dead gorgeous candle wicked stuff. You know those that beautiful wattle bag we had. Oh, she should see what she's been doing. It's amazing. And Karen will be there with her beautiful new fabric range, which I absolutely love. And um, 
it's it's just it's like Karen has spent the weekend with Tilda and Shula Pink that's the only way I can describe it I, I don't know why but she's taken all of the elements of some other things that I love and wound them all together with her stuff I just love it okay one two three four I want to make sure that I've got at least four wedges off this I could go back the other way but I was talking here and pull that bit out that's also not going to be wasted so you've now got four wedges of each of these fabrics no Diana no no you mustn't get nervous okay if you're going to get nervous if you are going to get nervous about this type of freestyle cutting maybe just a little glass first in the evening just to you know loosen up and get rid of that concern and self-doubt a little glass and crank the music up and then all those two things just take away that hesitancy I don't I don't do this when I'm fabric designing but I do have music up or I'm in a loud cafe because it takes away my lack of confidence in doing something true 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 now we're going to take each pile and dovetail them this way so And flip this one so it goes back just move these over five what have I done one oh there it is it's stuck underneath okay put that one down and you can put them in any order you can rearrange them whatever you want to do so see what I'm doing now I want you to if you do this if you stick with the same sort of quantities that I'm using and you can do anything but if you grab one of these packs or six for eights you're going to put them together in two sets so one two three four five six and then I would keep going and use the second pile to do the same so that's going to make up one sort of big uh, square if you like of strip sewn wedged uh, pieces together so I'm going to have these two all together and then the other two sets that I've still got left I'll make up a second one so you're going to end up with them um, pieced together in two sets if you've got lots and lots of leftovers of different things you're just going to keep piecing until you've got a, a rough square so when you come to piece these together uh, particularly if you've got a whiz bang banana you want to be able to speed sew these. You don't want to be messing around. You want to get it done really nice and quick. So turn up your stitch length to at least three. Um, it's because you haven't got time. We've got to get it done before Christmas. Turn off your start securing stitch. Uh, if you've forgotten how to do that, please bear with us for a minute, everyone. You're going to go into your little cog wheels. You're going to go into the top left where it's got the straight stitch and the little zigzag bit. And in there you can turn just on or off your little, your little knot with a needle, turn off your securing stitch. You don't need it for this project. And then at the other end, you just want the automatic cutter. You also don't need a securing stitch at the other end. Just a quick sew. So they're all done. Now what you're going to end up with then, if you do both sets, is two squares of strippy paste fabric. I'm going to make this one up. There were expletives this morning. I'm so happy that Steve was out of earshot. Not a very good example to set as boss or mother. It's fine. Um, because I was not paying attention and I cut one wrong. This, so there is an extra seam in this that should not be there. Now I want you to jump ahead for me, just bear with me and jump ahead a little bit. This is where we're going to end up before we hit the sewing machine. So if you look at this bit here, and if you can imagine all of that was pieced right across, then I'm going to get you to cut it this way. And then with the other square, you're going to cut the other way. I'm going to show you this technique, but with some plain fabric as well, because I made a little bit of a boo-boo 
Oh, hello Petra and Nan, you're late and um, we will forgive you. That is perfectly fine. So you can see how it comes together when you do that wedge piecing. It's actually really, really effective. You're going to have two of them and when you've got them together pretty much in these big rough wedge pieced squares, I want you to put them separately, not what I did, separately on the cutting mat. You're going to cut one that way, diagonally across and you're going to cut the other one the other way. You mustn't cut them both the same way. And then you're going to get these gorgeous pairs of triangles that you will be able to marry up together and get this effect radiating out from the diagonal line in the middle. Now you'll see I've already popped a curve in here. I'll show you how I did that as well with a couple of other bits. What's going to happen from here is that I'm going to hit the sewing machine and I'm going to quilt in the ditch or right next to all of these lines and then that's going to give it a really sort of strong accented look of having veins in my leaves. Uh, whose power's back on? Oh hello Deb, power's back on, super. Um, I could also come through and add some extra lines in through here to add more detail into the veins because I'm going to make a leaf. So. Get your head around that for a minute and then I'm going to take you to a couple of simpler bits. Oh, also we've popped up today, you see I've got it stuck, a piece stuck on the back and a piece, and it's stuck on the front. We've popped up two-sided adhesive rubber foam batting. So we sell a lot of sewing, we haven't got one-sided at the moment, sewing's great for bags and things. But the two-sided one, I wouldn't use it for bags because then when you're messing with your bags and stuff, the lining is going to stick to the outside and it can get a really, as well as the outside, it gets a bit messy. But the, the two-sided is really, really good um, for placemats because everything stays really nice and snug together. Let me put, I forgot to tell you about the, I'll come back. So I've got here... Um, I've got here this yummy bubble paisley that we've got in last week. If you remember that, we've got bolts of that in all different colours and pre-cut packs. So I'm going to use this with a pre-piece, sorry, a piece of plain black just to show you what I meant about cutting these squares. You, I mean, I'm going to end up with big placemats. So uh, if you... Um, you know, if you don't want ones that big, you can just do smaller ones if you want to. What's that, Melissa? You use two-sided for bags, so you must be doing pretty perky bags almost with your binding around the top. I suppose it depends on which one you're using. Um, this stuff, when it sticks, it, it really, really sticks. And every time I iron my bags, <laughs> they go a bit funny on the lining from the inside. But the other thing too, Melissa, is to I uh, iron my bags a lot when they're on display. What's that, Miss Tina? You were thinking of Christmas too? Yeah, okay, okay. So yes, I'm making ones for Christmas with all my leftover Christmas fabric. I think they'd be really cool. Right, so I cut that at 10, roughly. I'm going to cut this at 10. Just getting some squares together to show you how this works. Wouldn't this be cool for Christmas? If we were game enough to run the black. What's that, Kath? Oh, you've been out for the day to sail. You won't have any power. Oh, and it's still on. Oh, heavens. Don't you hate that? Sometimes you go, if I'd known that that wasn't going to happen. All right, so. I only really need one to show you, don't I? We're very tempted just to set them on top and go, but uh, I'm not going to. Now, oh, of course, it doesn't really matter. I've used plain black. That was a bit silly. But it's the, it's the, it's the technique that counts, right? If you'll forgive me. So whatever you are using, whatever, if you've got a Christmas stripe, a fine one, this would be fantastic to use your Christmas stripe too instead of doing the piecing I've just shown you. So if you can imagine all my wedges that we just did all in here and I would cut one this way and this other piece, all my wedges, 
I cut the other way. Really, really important. Or there will be a swear jar full at your house. And everyone will look at you with the raised eyebrow. So you can see when I separate these, they go the opposite ways. It would be really important if that was patterned and I'd thought of that. So you're going to take this one here and he's going to come down to that one. And that one's going to go around to there so that you end up with opposite ones. Really, really important if you've got directional print or piecing like I've just shown you. Okay. Now, if you want to get this curve thing going on, all I did was that. And you're going to kill me. Some of you are going to have some fancy schmancy ruler, aren't you, to do this for your for machine quilting or something. You are, aren't you? Um, okay. If you are worried about inaccuracy, I suggest you maybe put a little bit dab of glue under here. I'm not going to. I'm going to wing it. I'm going to do this. They're overlapped, so I end up with a mirror kind of not a mirror image the same image so when I pull that off the black bit comes off that side and the green bit comes off that side and then they will nest together with a curve so I've kept it really fine I haven't gone overboard then then I've got a couple of choices with this I could actually piece it together so I could get my pins ready so I'm going to have an outer curve and an inner curve I would mark them I'd bring them over and I would be able to ease that seam around but I decided I decided what I would prefer to do is actually get these onto the double sided um, batting with another piece underneath quilt, quilt it how I want to so you can imagine on this side I could really go to town with some gold metallic so that the leaf's got some info on it you know some sorry some some detail on it and if you were going to do these girls for Christmas well then you know if this is going to be in a red or a beautiful Christmas green on this side get onto your machine make sure you know how to do it put people's names on here Merry Christmas and their names or something cute over on this side so these would be quilted and then you'd mark in your shape so I'm going to come back to my big one here you know it's always the intention there is always the intention to have the uh, here's one I prepared earlier and then things like this morning happen you know well that didn't happen did it and I must say we've been very very kind of busy in the background getting these block of the months ready and I so that's why I'm just going to be honest with you I don't want to join you tomorrow and go there's nothing to do because I'm not ready I would rather say well, let's get back together on Tuesday for our cocktail special, oh, we're doing cocktails, aren't we? Again, put these down here. All right, so back to this one. So when I have quilted all all of this, I'm going to put a piece of bias over that seam, and I'm going to cut it from half a meter of this one there's as I said there's still some up on the website really super cheap I forget what Steve put these out of. I think they're Stevie I'll ask you Steve-o he's left me ah how much are these petite sun special we did for Jill 12 I think they're 12 aren't they something amazing doesn't matter which side does it anyway I I've got half a meter of this so for each one because I'm going to keep mine big and sort of use it like a big table center for my table so I'm going to use half for the back which you can see I've already cut it's on there and then the other half I can cut bias strips now I'm going to use one bias strip to come through here and actually pop on to cover up that center 
Um, <clears throat> I won't even do it with a bias maker, you know. I'm actually going to just hand do it because I don't... I think it would be really, really good to have it a little bit irregular. Who said what where, Diana? <laughs> yeah, no, Diana, no, I don't. I don't do too much. I need to do more. I need to do more. I need to do that. Yeah, and then go around. Okay. What, what I need now to show you sort of what, like the whole picture rocks out like, is a Sharpie. So just two ticks. Okay. Alright. Right. Everyone, Steve's going to the post office. So if you have orders that say they're leaving today, they're actually really leaving right now. They are on their way. Alright. So the big thing is, how are you going to get the shape of your leaf? There are several ways you can do it. You know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say get out a big plate and get a curve happening here with a big platter. And when you get to about here, you're going to kick the platter, flip it over and take the curve back the other way. You can go out into the garden and pick yourself a leaf, any leaf shape that you like. And if you have a photocopier or a scanner or something that you can enlarge that leaf to get it to the size you want, you know you've got the real shape of a leaf. You can sit and have a play at drawing your own leaves. Just get some paper and have a little bit of a play. It's not going to hurt on the paper. But you, you know, once you get the shape that you really like or get someone to do it for you, then you can transfer it on. Some of us have got stuff like purchased leaf shaped mats and things. So just have a little bit of a hunt around. I'm going to wing it. You ready? Hello, Sue McConchie. How are you this afternoon? I'm going to wing it. You ready? I'm going to go. So for me, I usually go out and then in. Go out, and then I'll come down to a point, and then on the other side, not as much. We'll bring it around and go in there. Oh, that was that was a bit that was a bit game, wasn't it? Okay, now just I want to check that this. Uh, this batting is ironed down on the back. It is so thick that you can iron it onto one side and if you haven't popped a cover on the other side yet or fabric on the other side, it, it's not going to stick to your ironing board. Just press down lightly and it will be fine. So we'll turn back this way. I'm just going to use sharp little scissors to cut on this curve. We'll cut this out here. Just, uh, it would be negligent of me not just to mention again um, on, so we're going to move to Tuesday. I've seen an email come through from Cass while we've been uh, having a chat. So I've asked her to change our Benina event to with our Tuesday Cup show. As I said, just because I really, really want to make sure we are super ready to post out Michelle's. But also, I'm on time and I've just got about two hours stitching to finish off my block of the month. All of the kits are cut, but we've just got to get over that last little bit and start getting them ready to go out. So I really want to meet with you on Tuesday and be able to look you in the eye and say it's done we are done um, but yeah um, you know and we wish Michelle all the best and she's been an absolute legend getting those patterns ready for us because I'll be honest it's been more popular than we expected so you know we keep bringing going oh no we'll have another five please oh no we need another five please and so in the end I went that's it and she kind of said that's it and fabric wise we had to say that's it I'm quite oh I do like that okay we can trim it down a little bit more you know what I want now I want like an applique ladybird right there on there so I can see that sitting for me it's a very uh, it's weird. 
asymptomatic in asym you know what I'm trying to say asymptomatic asymmetrical got there can you tell them off the sugar again today asymmetrical leaf but you could do them any shape you like you could do round ones if you wanted to um I can see these scrap the batting Big ones of these or smaller ones of these applicate onto a quilt. Have them all hanging down off a branch. It'd be very mod, wouldn't it? Love to do it. You know me. Ombres all the way. All right. So you're just showing off, Catherine. Catherine's off to the gym. Um, you know who I'm going to the gym with next week. Mum. Mum's got a PT, you know, because that's what you do when you hit mid-70s. You want to stay looking like she does, fabulous, thin, and look like you're still my age. So, fabulous and thin, and thinner than me at my age. So, she's got a PT. Dad's not sure he wants to go next week. He wants to go bowling, so I'm probably going. With Mum. And I'll probably get my butt kicked next to Mum. How embarrassing. See this bit left? This is the little leaf, isn't it? Now it's sort of like, what what do we use these bits for? So you could have this sort of on, on the side table. And, and I can see this. I've got a, a couple of lovely wooden bowls that we've brought back from Tassie in wood because Rob loves it. Uh, Jenny, what's this? Oh, is your pencil having a little bit of a holiday? It's probably enjoying the culinary delights of Oakley, which is a very big uh, ethnic Greek community area. It will be kicking back, having some baklava and, 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 and halloumi and lots of other gorgeous things in Oakley. So a bowl about there on the dresser. And then what will you do with these bits? Well, I think we make a couple of smaller ones. like that for the uh, tea candles I feel like saying don't try this at home but you can there you go so that one tea candle can I do it again Hang on. let's have a go up there and then two tea candles so I can make those into little mats different size and have them sitting here next to the big one and these if I put these on the floor within five minutes Ginny will be sitting on them that's a given as we all know so we have this big one oh, I've got a table outside when I finish these off I'll have to take the photo so you could have the big one and then have these sort of sitting a little bit further down with the tea candles on them mm. All right, so we need to bind these as well as doing this bit down the middle. So please just uh, remember what you are talking about. I need to know. No rush. What's this? Uh, Carol, yeah, you've got some that aren't um, a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit neglect, reluctant to leave Victoria. But you've also got some still sitting with some with here. That's why I said I've got to check with you because I think Steve has sent you some little orders for your big books of feet and things that I'm about to show the girls again so yeah I'll give you a call after the show right this half that I've got left I'm going to cre just create some binding both for the edge of the leaf and also for that uh, line down the middle you've got a couple of options this is quite thick so with this I'm going to end up with just, I just want a little, just a fine uh, binding around the edge on these. And of course if I keep it finer then um, it's going to be a lot easier to get round the corners. So we usually go, what do you do? Two and a quarter. I'm going to bring it right down 
to one and three quarters. And then for that center vein, as I said, I'm not going to run mine through a bias maker. Um, I'm quite keen to have it a little bit irregular. So I'm going to cut just a three quarter inch and see how this looks. I just, you know, it's not really sensible, is it, me telling you to get all of your scraps out of the cupboard when I'm supposed to be selling you fabric. But I just, I just, um, I feel also a responsibility to give you ideas to use up what's in the stash. Use up what's in the stash. Because we, you can lose your creativity if you do just always buy kits for things, you know. It, it's really, really important for your creative mind to play with what you've got. And I know that's why a lot of you love um, the remnants packs that mum puts together. Oh, which she's got a massive tub. I gave her one yesterday. Massive tub. So there will be more coming to the website very soon. But that's, you know, it's like, what did I say? It's Sudoku. Sudoku for the quilter, those packs. You see what I'm doing? I'm just, besides giving the camera and you a facial with steam, I'm just on purpose going a little bit rough and ready with my thin bias strip. just said they liked the fabrics I don't know who it was but I hope you're in the applique sampler club because we've got a lovely collection of greens going out in this uh, this next pack for a gum gum leaf wreath and it includes a little precious bit of my long out of print bright green wattle you're getting a little bit of that to play with as I said the packs are also looking nice and neat because mum packed them. <coughs> Not me. She did actually say, I must admit, she said, how many? <laughs> so, they took a while. Yeah, and um, the other thing I've got here to show you if you missed the Benina show on Saturday or you haven't seen it, we had a special on the Big Book of Feet and the Big Book of Embroidery. Uh, I bought a few extras in just in case and I've got I think two, three left at that special price and one of the embroidery I think. So I'll show you those in a tick. All right, that will do for that piece. So that's going to be the vein down the center. And then I'll just hit this with the starch. Don't need to go in half, I know what I'm doing. Okay, we'll just whiz down this side on this end to show you one way. And then the other end, I'm gonna do it in half. I'll show you why. But and also thank you to everyone that has bought the coin purses, the applique essential packs in the pink, uh, and these boutiques because, as I said, the 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 money that that we've taken from the sale of those from uh, last week and also the um, the leftover fabric is going off to Jewel for BJ Quilters to oh, it'll go on Monday so you're either donating money to Breast Cancer Awareness and Research or you are um, in buying it and what you don't buy it goes to the girls to make things for people at Peter Mac anyway so it's a win-win everyone everyone wins on that front all right now just to show you the differences here of what you can do with your binding. So we've cut it on the bias, so it's got give, and you've got to do that when you've got your curves or it's going to pucker. I actually 
I'm not convinced that I did this really well. I'm sure I would have cut it on the bias, but I don't think it's a true bias because it hasn't, hasn't got round that corner as nicely as I would want. Now the other thing too, I think this is a little bit puckery. You probably can't see it from there, but it is, trust me. A little bit puckery too. My batting's too thin for a wall hanging. Uh, it's, it, it's probably just cotton. It, back then it would have been cotton or, or thin wool. It's not enough. Uh, I think when I make this again, I'm going to put it on a big piece of soft and stable rubber foam batting because I need it to hold its shape really well. So it was sort of competing on that edge with the thickness of the binding and there just wasn't enough body in there to hold its shape. When I first ever saw a quilt that had been bound on a corner, the binding had been taken all the way to the back and it was actually Diana Johnson's quilt. She's got this rose quilt and it's just amazing and um, the edges of the petals of the roses on the corners is the edge of the quilt because she's taking the binding all the way to the back. And that's of course another thing you can do if your batting is a little bit thinner or you've got to allow for that soft and stable you wouldn't you've got to be able to turn the, the batting under. So that would be used for something else again. But that was an absolutely amazing quilt. All right, so you can see we've got the give. So I would be able to piece this onto here with my walking foot and I'd be able to get that over onto the back. Now I've kept it really nice and thin. I don't want a lot of that to show. So I'm going to use a very, very small um, quarter inch, scant quarter inch or even down to an eighth of an inch, I'll find something that will work against the edge of my uh, ruler somewhere. Who said what where? I missed out on the pink essential pack. Fiona, no, no, no. I think they're back up and if they're not, they will be by the end of today. So no, you won't have missed out. Don't, please don't pin. Because we ran out and I just last night, I ran out at sort of I don't know. I noticed I got a report that we'd run out very late, so we'll get them done today. Um, but just really, really small. I don't want this binding to be that much of a feature. I can hold that like that. Actually, I'll, I can get you up closer. So you can see that's going to be a really, really fine, narrow binding, and I'm going to slip stitch it onto the back. If I was in a hurry and it was Christmas Eve, I'd go the other way. So it actually sew it onto the back, hang on, I'd sew it onto the back and I would bring it over onto the front and top stitch it on with my walking foot. So there's two ways that you can, um, there's, there's two ways that you can do it. Now then for this bit, and that would work for my little guys as well, I'm really annoyed I mucked this up now, I'll have to, I'm going to have to go back and do it again. I think I've got enough bits. I'm not going to eat into the seven pre-cut packs. I think I've got probably enough in my stash. But I'm none too impressed with myself at all. Okay, this piece here is the bit that I have cut. Oh yeah, that works. See that? That's going to sit down the middle there really nicely. And that's just going to cover up that center curved seam again because it's cut on the bias. And you can see, it doesn't matter if it goes thinner or thicker. That's going to look good. Um, it would be really nice, again, to slip stitch this down, but I think uh, this piece um, I will stick down with fabric glue right down the middle, or uh, a piece of uh, some blazer fix or something. And I will come back and use the machine and my walking foot to put it on, maybe with a monopoly thread that we've now got in stock so it's a clear one and a little zigzag just down the middle so that it's it, it doesn't really stand out the because you need to get that actual bias piece on then you could come back and use your walking foot through all the layers either side of it and that will make the the vein pop up on the top if you wanted to add a little bit more detail on the end when you're putting your binding on a little bit of a loop of uh, top stitched binding on the end would be really cute and that way you know if you I just wanted to got a spare hook near the front door or something when you're not using it on the table on your coat rack you can just hang them up near the front door 
she should do that or a little bit of ribbon or something these little guys that don't have the veins on them of course you can add detail into these with your with your stitching with a walking foot so I would draw on um, with an iron off pen just some veins down through these to have a play with iron off's great because when you're experimenting if you don't like what you've done you can just iron it off and do it again so so I think Excuse the mess, girls. Look at the mess going on here now. Um, I think... I don't think I can be bothered remaking it. I think I'm going to live with that and go, that was the day that I was not paying attention and I will never do it again. But that on a nice wooden... on my wooden dresser. Hmm. Or on my pine table outside near the barbecue. And then I'll pop these two little ones on. So that is just another project to add to the pile of things that I have promised you that I will finish off but if, uh, if I've got kind of tomorrow and some help from Rob with getting all of the kits ready we should be good there's no excuses really I'm sure we will manage to get it done uh, in between propping up the back fence oh. <laughs> It's still really windy out there. It is just still blowing an absolute gale. Yes, Diana, only I will... See, you're absolutely right. Only I will see it. And you know what? It will always be me that points it out to people that don't see it. Don't we all do that? We all go, can't help ourselves. Oh, you like it? Yeah, but look what I did there. We just just can't help ourselves, can we? Um, now, oh, no, quickly, quickly. We, we had last week on the Benina show the big book of feet as i said on special so they are down to 100 they're down to 150. i think the recommended retail officially from benina is 200. most stores like to run them at about 175 somewhere in there we whacked them straight down to 150 because i thought they were the perfect present for you to think about getting someone else to buy you for christmas so I brought them in. Now we ended up with some extras because I forgot I already had three here and then we ordered all the ones that people had ordered and we're sending them out. Oh, Cass says, how am, how am I in long sleeves? Well, it's cold, Cassandra. It, we haven't got the heat that you've got. This was me, this was one of those purchases, right, with the pockets. Um, and I'm very happy it actually fits. <laughs> but when you've got boys and you're sort of in the surf shop, if you have to hang in surf coastal clothing shops for so long, you do not leave without buying something. So this would have been the, the, the gear, the board short, surfy kind of shop with the girls stuff over in one corner either on Phillip Island at San Remo or Morty Surf near me at Morty Alex Surf Shop um, that would be why so it's sort of you know one of those things that I don't usually wear but it's freezing down here mate it's just it's it's absolutely cold it has got a snazzy hood the teacher's work is never finished says Petra they always have several steps ahead of the student yeah I know Oh, Melissa, you've just ordered the book. Fantastic. Fantastic. So let me just show you what you get in a book. You get, it is the Bible. And you'll start off going, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. Sure, I already knew that. I think I know that. Oh, heavens, what are we talking about? What on earth? What on earth is a zero foot? That's where I started. And then I went, oh, oh. Is that what a zero foot does? Okay. The other thing too with this book, and I've spoken about this on Benina Days, you learn to look at the bottom of your feet, not just the top. And I have tied it up and taken all my feet. And here, it shows you what's going on underneath. And you learn a lot. You learn so much about your machine and about what different feet do. What's a 1D compared to a 1C? Obviously, we all know now, it's dual feed, but there's extra information that goes on. It talks about how to use all of the feet, pin stitching, double needle stitching, decorative stitching, 
and that's just with foot number one then we go on to two and every time it will tell you the technique the stitch the width the length and the needle position <laughs> um, it runs through all the buttonhole how to put cord in through your buttonhole and I'm only on you know foot number three so it's a reference book it's like the book that you have when you it's your wish list so you go I need to do this first of all what's the best foot to do it so you run through this book have a look and you learn as you go you post it note it see it's showing you what underneath looks like on a number 20 and why it's important um just heaps of heaps of techniques and then you'll be able to line all that up with the youtube videos and things as well i as a dealer thought i knew a lot <laughs> i bought seven new feet i think i i just decided i had to own them that's a terrible thing you will all have feet you may be able to do things with the feet you've got that you didn't know so that's the big book and it just and little ideas you know little pickies of examples of what you can do lots of diagrams um span what what is a spanish hem stitch attachment number 47 hang on i've got to look now secure i don't know but see do i need one i'm not sure what's a spanish oh 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 look at this look at this it's an attachment you put in the middle of your foot and it and it allows you to stitch two pieces of fabric together with a bit of ribbon in the middle heavens no okay i obviously haven't read the whole book how to use your lever roll anyway that's the big book um it feels a little bit eight a little bit noughties a little bit 90s when you go through um i sort of went mm, to start with about some of the pictures and then i went oh no that's just stupid because they are all up to date that you know there's only pin tucking is pin tucking what's this bit curved piecing french seams turning corners tucks it's a very good book i've learnt lots from here and i don't have to ring Nathan as often I don't have to ring Nathan Hammond state sales manager as often anymore because he does have a double degree in garment construction and manufacture and so he's kind of up with all of the, the seamstress tailor stuff because I go to the book first so I actually learn a lot from the book and then I can take it further if I want to so he's happy that I own a book this is the other one so I've bought this one tongue-in-cheek for Rob because he tongue in cheek owns the <laughs> the 590. So you know what happened, don't you? I sold the 590 on him. You know that's just horrible. I'm so ashamed. But when you someone wanted it and wanted it quick, and I understand why, and I did it. So his is now back in the building in a box, and I have to pull it out for Tuesday. I've now bought him one of these because, like the foot book, if I own a machine embroidery module. I thought, well, maybe I need to own this. He need, we need to own this book. And this kind of does the same thing, but for machine embroidery. About design formats, transferring designs. Whoa, from your laptop to your machine. Stabilizers, stitch counts. It's telling you all about which stabilizers to use for what type of embroidery. And then it it goes through and talks about all the full editing patterns and what you can do on each of the machines so depending on which machine you own you have different features in your machine so therefore it, it you're not second guessing can i do it on my machine it's all in the book so this unfortunately is the same price as the big book of feet but it's it's a fantastic reference book and as i said the other day i've spent that and more on just coffee table books for design work so i really can't complain template types hoop template yeah the challenge for me is to stay ahead of rock because he's very tech and i'm very hands-on so i think if i just design what i want to be able to embroider with the, with the designer software and then he he can do the rest um, but I need to stay a step ahead of you that own a machine 
embroidery module as well. And you know I slacked off. I didn't do it when Leanne was doing it for me, but I really need to learn how to do it with the bananas. So I will do that. Anyway, they are both on the website if you would like to purchase one. I'm leaving that special up. Um, we did sell a lot more than I expected, and but then I shouldn't have thought that because it was a good deal. So we've got a few more coming down. We've put up what we've got on the website that are coming in and they'll be here about Wednesday so you can order one and we'll send it out for you uh, when they're ready, if you like. But they're there if you want them. So Tuesday, I will see you have your felt baskets ready to go if you've got one. We have got more coming in so you'll be able to grab one if you want to. If you've got a zip laying around with a bit of fabric that kind of matches, you might want to have that ready for Tuesday because we're going to make some simple, not simple, shouldn't say that, some very quick and easy effective little zip pockets that you can put into bags, onto bags, onto our felt basket. We'll do that and we're going to look at um, couching things on as well for bags, cord, felt and things as well like the cool fluffy stuff that I showed you. So that's what we're doing. Now we're supposed to be dressing, look at that, isn't it just disgusting. We're supposed to be dressing up on Tuesday because it's Melbourne Cup Day. I'm thinking I might make myself a big 3D flower as seen on Craft and Cook. I've got some pretty cool fabric there so I'm going to do that just for my hair. I don't even know if I own a frock. I said we were going to frock up and I'd, I'm not even sure I own one that fits me at the moment but I'll have a, I'll have a little bit of a look and see what I've got. But we will get together at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. If you are into watching the race, I think the race isn't till about 3.30. So we will not miss the race. So uh, I'll see you on Tuesday for Beninas and Zips, bag stuff, pockets. Um, and I have some beautiful new Zips as well. So yeah, I'm going to confess I've got those ready for you. So um, wait, there are questions. I always do this, I go, and I'll say bye, I go, oh no, wait, there's a question. Wait, 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 wait. Ruth says, hello, Ruth. I didn't see you'd popped in. Uh, I would like the machine foot book, please. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I haven't seen you for ages. I'm thinking, what's you writing? I know. Okay, now I think Steve's put them up on the website. If he hasn't, well, they were there ready because we've had people ordering them. But just pop onto the website. And then they'll be there and if they're not there as soon as he gets back was that you Steve? Nope it's just windy here I can hear thumps and bumps as soon as he's back I'll make sure they're live for you to be able to uh, buy one it's very very nice to see you right uh, Kristen fabrics on the site wait they're here wait 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 I got it I got it there is a pack. There is a pack in pre-cuts. They're called. Oh, he's going to kill me. He gave me one to show you. I'll give uh, you one. Oh, oh, he is back. Stevie, the books are up, aren't they? Yeah. It's coming. It's going to give me another one. It's going to give. Me, I'm sorry, Steve. I don't know what I've done with them. Ta. It's here somewhere. Do you know if Merle is watching? Merle's here. Merle, your Christmas decorations have arrived. Merle, I'm sure Merle's still here. Merle, your Christmas decorations for our show have arrived. I don't know now. No, we're not opening it. No, no, it's going to be like Christmas. Um, Kristen, this is the pack. So in, in pre-cuts on our website, there is a, a pack called Bush Batiques. So you can grab that there. Also, we've tagged it for today. So at the top of the home page, Steve always pops up a tag. And if you click on that for today's show, it will bring those up. And it will also bring up, I'm pretty sure, it will bring up this beautiful one, uh, which is on super special as well for $12 a meter. So if you were to grab half a meter or a meter of that as well, you popped that up on its own. Oh, but this one here. I put it on the kitchen table. I'm sure you did. No? Oh. This one. Okay. If you go in and put in AYU, which is for AU Batiques, you will find the Batiques that we've got on sale at the moment, and this one is still there. So if you wanted to grab this one for the back, 
that would be a really economical way to do it. But they are, they're beautiful, rich Aussie bush colours. They're really, really nice. You are most welcome, Kristen. I'm very excited that um, Mel's Christmas decorations are here. I'm allowed to have another tree, did you know that? Two Christmas trees. Two Christmas trees. Got enough decorations? Yeah, the girls are sending them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yes, and I wanted to because we, our, our green one bit the dust. Something tragic happened to it. I can't remember what it was now. It got put up the top of ah. somewhere and then it melted. Can I tell you what happened to our Christmas tree? Because it's a thing to know. It got put into the roof at our old house and Dad put it against one of the spotlights up in the ceiling and it melted. It got too hot. Probably nearly burnt the house down. Don't want to think about that now, um, but we have a white tree because when we launched Melba, we bought a beautiful, beautiful big white tree the year after and we had all pink and silver Christmas decorations. So depending on the decks you send, I'm going to choose the best tree contrast for your decorations. So that's what's going to happen. Um, but that's it. All right. You all need to go and sew now and get cracking. Go through the stash, find something to make up some leaf placemats with or grab something for us and um, I look forward to seeing you all frocked up, ready for Tuesday. Now we've also been very, very neglectful in not working out how to show you other images and Rob has promised me that we've done that because I've only got the Quilters Life one up. So I will also get that done. If you've got any photos of hats or bags that you are wearing for the cup, then send them to us and I will make sure they at least get posted on Facebook, all right? There is no Miss Ginny today either, like the other day. That's a nice change. Um, have a fabulous weekend, won't you? And I really, really look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Bye. Bye.